I'm Rob Kiniston. I farm here at Great Wollaston in Shropshire, just on the Welsh border and next to the Shropshire Hills. We're also part of two river catchments, the Ray Brook and the Trowan Brook. So this acts actually as a watershed and makes life quite interesting. I'm also a leaf demonstration farm. So welcoming visitors here to see our dairy farm and look at the crop rotation that we do. We've been practicing regenerative farm in some form here for a number of years with the crop rotations. But recently I've started to look at it in more detail and making sure that we have cover crops on the fields all year round. So there's roots growing in the ground and taking up nutrients. Part of regenerative farming is having livestock. And of course, being a dairy farm, we've always had livestock here, which has helped the soil microflora as well. I also practice min till, which is basically just cultivating the top few inches of soil. And this helps uh, maintain the soil structure um, and the invertebrate life within it. Being a dairy farm and an arable farm, we have a good mix of livestock rotation on the farm. So we're using a lot of what we grow to feed the livestock and then, then manures from the livestock come back onto the soils to increase the soil organic matter and hopefully store extra carbon. This helps lock up nutrients, stabilizes the soil over winter and then when we plough this in in the spring it actually adds to the organic matter within the soil. This year for the first time I'm experimenting with lowering the level of protein within the dairy ration. This also has the added advantage that this reduces the ammonia losses from the slurry. Being in the two river catchments that the farm now is, it's quite important to look after soil health so it traps nutrients and stabilizes the soil. And a lot of these regenerative practices actually enhance that and help uh, those measures that keep soil in the field and keep nutrients where they should be growing crops. Most of the fields on the farm have six metre margins, which I find work really well. They get machinery away from the hedgerows and also any sprays and fertilisers. Some of the margins, of course, are against ditches and this helps water quality by slowing down any sediment that be, may be running off the field after heavy rainfall and also for trapping nutrients thus keeping them out of the catchments that this farm is part of. Regenerative practices have multiple benefits for air and water quality, climate change and biodiversity, and for the farm business. Keeping soils covered, integrated livestock management, minimising soil disturbance, and increasing diversity all help soil health and nutrient cycling. Effective nutrient and soil management help reduce nutrients and sediment lost, which helps improve water and air quality and helps to protect our sensitive habitats and species, such as those found on the Trewer Brook and the Breedland Hill. I found that these regenerative practices have really helped with the farm economics as well. This has also helped the soil health with a much deeper and better root structure from the herbal lays. This has reduced the, the need for a lot of nutrients. It also means there's less nutrients to be leached away. Growing a mixed uh, herbal lay has been a great advantage um, for lowering inputs because of the high clover content. Clover can fix a large amount of nitrogen within the soil, and this has helped to reduce the amount of fertilizer needed for the grass lays. With the new schemes and with the catchment sensitive farming, there may be the possibility of actually working with neighboring farmers 
on equipment and practices and sharing knowledge for the future. Catchment sensitive farming can provide specialist advice either directly or via our farm and land management advice service. We can offer visits on soil husbandry, soil and nutrient management and farm infrastructure. For more information and funding opportunities visit catchment sensitive farming web pages or contact your local catchment sensitive farming officer. Further advice is also provided in the DEFRA Code of Good Agricultural Practice on protecting our water, soil and air.